What are your night shift horror stories? Worked a parking garage at the airport. Cleaning the top deck and noticed about a hundred ravens all over a truck with a tarp over the bed. Took my flashlight expecting something awful. Noticed as I got closer the smell and the ravens taking turns going in a hole they had torn open and popping out covered in gunk. Some guy left a broke down beater with a couple animal carcasses in the back to rot. No heads. Checked the logs and the damn truck had been there since November and it was April, so everything was just thawing and breaking down. Not mine but I used to work at a small hotel and the manager there told me a terrifying night shift story. It was about midnight when she got a call at the front desk from a man. He said that he's with his 8-year-old daughter who dances competitively and needed advice on what she should wear. She gave him some basic fashion advice. He asked my manager what about fishnet leggings? Do you think those are too sexy? Then proceeds to talk in graphic detail about how he thinks his own daughter has been trying to seduce him for weeks and how he's starting to enjoy seeing her dance in these cute outfits. Meanwhile my manager is looking through a computer system trying to figure out who this man is so she can call the cops. However the room he was reportedly in was empty. The man ends up hanging the phone up before she could find out where he was truly calling from. A couple months later at around 11 p.m. my manager answers the desk phone. A familiar voice asked her if she could help him pick out an outfit for his daughter's next dance recital. She asked him let me guess you want to know if she should wear fishnet leggings? The man immediately hangs up the phone. Many many years ago, I worked at a regional radio station in the middle of ducking nowhere, Australia. I was the overnight operator, keep the overnight playlist running, set up for the morning, do all the manual checks for the next day, and jump on the desk if anything funky happens. I spent a lot of time sitting in what was essentially a tin shed in the middle of a paddock, with my dog, shoes off, listening to 50s and 60s music and doing crossword puzzles. Except one night when the roo shooters came through. They spooked the kangaroos in the paddock, and one of them jumped head first through our office window. So there's me, barefoot and half asleep, when this six doll kangaroo smashes through the glass window. Blood and glass everywhere. My dog starts chasing the kangaroo, I'm chasing my dog. And the kangaroo bounds around the office, knocking shit off desks in the dark, bleeding everywhere. I ran and opened the studio bay doors, and my dog chased it outside. Where, I'm assuming, the poor thing, the kangaroo, was shot. Then I had to call my boss. I used to work night shift as a care aide in an old folks home. It was already creepy, the home was an old hospital that was converted. Some dude kept walking around the courtyard after dark dressed as the grim reaper knocking on doors. It was actually really scary, he ran off and the facility got a security guard for a few weeks. I worked in an emergency room. The worst night that comes to mind involves a patient that was bitten by a baby timber rattlesnake. He was bleeding out of every single orifice by the time he got to us. More blood than I'd ever seen before outside of a motorcycle versus 75 mile per hour head first to asphalt. I don't remember how many doses of Crofab we gave him, but it was the hospital's entire supply. But trying to get him stabilized, arranging the helicopter transport to a bigger and better equipped facility, all the blood, those weren't the worst parts. The worst part was when the patient lost control of his bowels. I will never, ever, forget that smell. I spent the entire time standing by the door with a battery-powered fan and a handful of gauze pads saturated with cinnamon oil trying to reduce some of the smell. The doctor occasionally stuck her head out just so I could waft the cinnamon oil in her face. Yes, by some miracle, the patient did end up surviving, and as far as I know he made a full recovery. But the blood, the smell, and just the shock of it all. Yeah, never underestimate a baby timber rattlesnake. was an orderly in a hospital. Two of us were sitting in the basement office adjacent to the morgue. A guy passed our office, looking at us a little shifty, came back again and asked if we had access to the morgue. We said yes, thinking he was doing a pickup for a funeral home, but that seemed strange given it was around 12 o'clock to 12.30 a.m. No. He wanted to pay us to let him in, and leave him alone with the bodies for an hour. We escorted him up to security. Apparently he had tried it in the past, as security knew him. I worked in a residential treatment center for teen girls. One girl with some severe trauma, sexual assault, abuse, came sleepwalking into the room screaming to please untie her while clawing at her wrists. She was begging me to help her because he's torturing me. I sat her down and pulled her bracelets and watch off. 
she went completely limp then got up and went back to bed. It freaked me out seeing the raw emotion of her trauma since she was always smiling and relatively calm during the day. Did hospital security for about two months. It was small hospital out in the sticks so we were responsible for removing patients who had passed from their rooms and transferring into the morgue freezer. We had just brought a decedent to the morgue and right before we were about to transfer them to the freezer their cell phone rang. Granted, pretty tame compared to some stories, but at the time it gave us a decent fright. Work in the winter for me is plowing and snow removal, it was late and I had been out for over 24 hours at this point, pulled over into a small cul-de-sac with the nearest house being over a 100 yards away so I could let the truck stay on so I could stay warm. As I'm nodding off, there was a very loud bang and it felt like someone then pulled on my driver side door handle. Luckily I always locked my truck doors. I immediately threw on every strobe slash rear slash headlight and started looking around and I saw absolutely nothing and it scared the shit out of me needless to say I never sleep anywhere other than lit parking lots now. <laughs> Worked at a distress center almost 10 years ago. Was on the 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. shift. Got about two phone calls each hour of the shift from the same guy saying that he's tied up in a room, his balls are tied up with leather straps. And his wife is getting banged by five giant black guys in the other room. Asked him each time if he's in distress and he says no every time. Kept telling him if he's not in distress then he shouldn't be calling and let him go. I just can't believe he was up from 12 to 6 a.m. to make those calls. Worked as an evening manager at a major Hilton property. Got a complaint from a bunch of guests about the noise coming from one of the rooms. Turns out, a drunken man was beating the hell out of his wife and had the door barricaded so we couldn't get in. I called the cops, and they had to get into the room using the balcony from the next room over. I'm still traumatized by what I saw when they finally arrested him and got the wife out of the room. She was covered in blood. It was horrifying. Used to work night shift at a 24-hour Walmart. Customers are nuts enough in the daytime, but they become weird after midnight. Once had an elderly guy come in wearing only a jean jacket and fishnet stockings. He came up to my register, leaned in, and asked if we carried anything to get rid of lies. I was closing supervisor at a grocery store and someone managed to poop between the bathroom and the exit doors at 8.59, we close at 9 o'clock. You'd think oh there's literal poop on the floor surely people will walk around it no instead they continue to plow through it so now there's poop on multiple grocery carts, the exit is scattered with feces, there's poop on people's shoes undoubtedly, and there's poop in the parking lot. Luckily for me my less squeamish supervisor working with me that closing night volunteered to mop up the exit and bathroom which to our surprise had also been pooped on. For the record human shit makes me immediately gag and vomit when I get a whiff of it so I ended up puking in the trash next to the poop exit. Working late at my office slash workshop one night. I'm doing analyzes that take a while to run so I tend to snack and watch Netflix, or try and do another mundane task that needs to just run by itself. This is a big building, but I'm in the basement where no one goes, and the air con shuts off at night with little ventilation so it gets warm. The horror story was more for the security guard that walked in on me, a two meters tall man, with no shirt on, heavily tattooed, eating cereal at like 3 a.m. walking around. I could never look him in the eye after that. I worked at a high-rise residential overnight for a few years. I became very familiar with residents' habits slash schedules. People there were rich, either by their own means or living out of daddy's wallet, but to my surprise, they were all among the most miserable people I have ever encountered. I actually left the job because I couldn't stand how unhappy and self-destructive they all were. One guy in particular, I would see every night shuffling around the property, high as heck. He was retired doctor. I never saw him sober. The times I worked in the day, I'd never see him come out. Unlike other residents who went out and got high or drunk and brought the party inside, he never came back with friends, or even family. He kept to himself, even chose the entrance way that avoided interacting with me. One night, a man and woman check in to visit a resident. They tell me they are seeing the retired doctor. I call the guy to let him know that he has visitors, because that was protocol to avoid letting someone inside the building who wasn't supposed to be there, even people who I knew were friends with or dating the residents still had to get permission from the resident. Well, there's no answer on the phone, so I tell the visitors I can't let them up. The visitors exchange looks, and the man speaks up, of course he can't come to the phone. He just shot himself to death 15 minutes ago. 
Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.